Overwatch 2 is the best it's ever been. That's right, I just got invited to the Blizzard Summit, so I gotta talk positively about them in this Season 9 rant. I'm just kidding, I didn't get invited at all, but I'm still gonna talk somewhat positive about Season 9, because I truly believe this is one of the best seasons in Overwatch 2, period, and might even be the best season so far. There are big problems that they can solve, but there's a lot of things Season 9 does right. And I'm gonna break it all down, but I got tank guides, support guides, character guides, and so much more coming in Season 9. Nine, so press that subscribe button so you don't miss out and let's jump into it now we're going to take each of these changes one at a time we're going to talk about why they have improved or worsened the quality of the game and what further changes need to be made and first off is the hp change which of course is very connected to the bullet change which we'll talk about next but first the hp change overall is good in my opinion there's a couple things that having higher hp on average creates the first one is a slower time to kill which means that people are not just dying out of nowhere you have a little bit more time to get to a piece of cover you have more time to duel an enemy now, in my opinion, a slower time to kill is amazing. I love games with slow time to kill, and I like Overwatch as a game with slower time to kill. I don't want people dying instantly like a game like Counter-Strike or Valorant, where everything's about position, timing, and the way that you're challenging the enemy rather than having time in the middle of a duel to outplay somebody. Like, the longer a duel lasts, the more time that you have to potentially outplay them. It makes it so that you're not going to just randomly lose to a player that on average is far worse than you as much. It's still going to happen, but not nearly as much. Now, if you change HP to make it more, you still want things to die, right? You don't want to be in a situation where it's just a trade of resources. No one's dying. But so far in Season 9, things are dying just fine. And that's probably because of the bullet change, which we'll talk about in a second. But really, players are still dying. Things are still trading out. But there is more time to duel. And you're not nearly as instantly killed or punished in a way that you were before. There's a lot less instant deaths. And there's a lot more slow deaths or deaths that happen because you get outplayed over a series of several instances not all at once and i really do think that it's crazy that a lot of people are complaining about this change when literally just like three or four seasons ago everyone was complaining about getting one shot everyone was saying that getting one shot was the problem and they've effectively removed one shots and they did it in a way where people still die things still die you can still get kills just fine in fact in some ways you can get kills easier than before which we'll talk about in a bit but people are still mad I honestly really don't know what people want, but I've said this before, if you've watched my previous videos, that I'm a fan of things dying fast, but not dying instantly. And honestly, this new Season 9 is more in vision with what I've been wanting for Overwatch for quite some time. Now, I will say, with the HP chains, there are quite a few outliers. There are some characters that probably shouldn't have gotten as much HP, and there's other characters that maybe need a little bit more. But, of course, there's going to be outliers when you literally do a game-wide patch. There's no possible way that they would be able to perfectly predict how every single change will affect the meta, so we can hit those now. And having a couple of outliers that are easy to fix is not a reason to throw out the entire system. But let's move on to the bullet change, which is a good change, in my opinion, mostly. Now, some of you are going to show me training footage and you're going to say, this is crazy. I can't believe that you don't even have to be on a target in order to hit them at all. And I'm even seeing videos from people that don't even really play Overwatch in other games. People like Asmongold looking and reacting to the broken quote unquote hitboxes in Overwatch. But there's several things about this that I think is super disingenuous. The first one is shooting at bots in a training room is not even remotely close to a replicative of shooting people in a game. And everyone knows this, but somehow they use the bot shooting as like a point of reference and you know this just playing in season nine because it's not like you are unable to miss to the point where you can easily climb and you might be more accurate on average now but so is everybody and you have more hp to compensate with that and for dps players you have a passive to also compensate for that but a lot of people are arguing and saying they're ruining the skill in overwatch they're just removing skill overwatch is a super easy game to aim in and i'm seeing this from people all over the place and I want to ask these people questions. Have you ever consistently hit Widowmaker shots on like Tracers or Genjis or characters that are moving around crazy? If you haven't, then you haven't even gotten close to the skill ceiling mechanically in Overwatch. And I'm not saying this to be brutal or rude or mean, but it's important to understand that Overwatch is a very, very freaking difficult game to shoot in. It's incredibly freaking hard. Well, I'm going to go over this basic level here. One of my friends, Relth, on his YouTube channel, 
channel made a really detailed analysis about this problem that the bigger bullets fix, at least in part. You should definitely go check that video out and subscribe to him. He makes some really in-depth content about Overwatch and Overwatch balance philosophy. So yeah, it's content I like. You'll probably like it too. But as a TLDR, AD spamming and crouch spamming is just incredibly broken in Overwatch, and it always has been. A lot of people haven't really mastered the movement of Overwatch, but anyone who has knows that a crouch spamming tracer is one of the hardest characters to hit, like, in basically any game because of the zero acceleration time between going from right to left and crouching. Like a lot of games have penalties for crouching where you can't spam it. You can't instantly transition from right to left. You're not accurate while you're midair. Overwatch has none of these things and they have characters that are harder to hit because they move around more than just about any other freaking shooter genre. So when you have a game that is just incredibly hard to aim it automatically, it is okay to make it so that bullets hit easier on these characters. You're talking about a game where the aim skill floor is really, really high, and the aim skill ceiling is so high that no one is even remotely close. It's fine. There are other games where the hitboxes are perfectly in line with the silhouette, like freaking Valorant or Counter-Strike, but guess what? You're not hardly moving when you're shooting at enemies. They're not hardly moving either, and most of the time people are playing the same positions and not moving around dynamically. They can't even be remotely compared, and it's perfectly fine if bullets get more leeway. Even with a lot of these changes in place, it's still a very hard game to aim in consistently, especially if you're trying to hit consistently high crit shots on a lot of characters. Now, I won't be completely disingenuous here. There are some characters with hitboxes a little bit too big. I can attest to that for sure. And these are things that are gonna need to tweak quite a bit. Gotta keep in mind that a lot of these are outliers and the ultimate goal for bullet change and the way that it was implemented in my opinion was a good thing and it's actually good for Overwatch. It makes AD crouch spamming a lot less broken and makes it a lot easier to hit shots on the skill floor of the game while still having plenty of room on the skill ceiling that is left completely untapped. It's not even remotely close for players even in the highest skill levels of Overwatch. There's still so much more that we can get better and better and better at. Mechanically, I mean, the healing is basically infinite and overwatch is a game where there are peaks where you could see greatness but it's not consistently reached all the time but yeah much like with the hp change just because there are a few bad apples or a few problems those can be addressed but the system itself is good the hp change plus the bullet change as a concept is good and i think it improves the gameplay for pretty much everyone in overwatch it's really just a matter of trying to nip some of these things that are just not properly balanced in the new system whether it's too big of a bullet for some characters or maybe it's too much health or whatever the case may be but these two changes alone i'm a big fan of and i like them but if you don't agree i'm really curious your arguments down below now next up i do need to talk about the dps passive and my take on it is that it's good and keep in mind i might be a little bit biased in this regard i do consider myself a primarily dps main even though i have played all the roles i've climbed all the roles to high rank in both overwatch 1 and overwatch 2. i really do like support especially ana and zenyatta and i really do like tank as well especially diva doom and winston but even with all that said, I am a DPS made at heart, or at least a Genji made at heart. It's who I put the most hours into, so take my opinion here with a little grain of salt. But I do believe that the relationship between DPS and supports feels much more fair now than it did before. I do feel that with the lower health totals, which means that the damage that supports were doing mattered a lot more, and on top of that, the fact that there was no passive for the DPS that actually mattered in the support duel, and supports had all this great utility, in a lot of ways supports could be dps in 1v1s and in many ways they were favored to especially if the support player came in with about equal mechanical skill as the dps player supports would win a lot and it felt pretty unfair from a dps's point of view where your job feels like you need to harass these supports and maybe even kill them but how do you do that when they're better at dueling you than other DPS are in a lot of ways and they can just pump out crazy amounts of heals so that you can't really focus the tank because their tank is just immortal. It's one tank getting all this heals. So you just feel like you're going to get punished no matter what you do. And I feel like because of the new DPS passive, 
the relationship between supports and DPS is a lot more in line in the way that it should be, in my opinion. Support is still very, very strong with tons of great utility. You still have access to all this super stacked and powerful utility, and you still have choices. You have the choice to burst heal. You have the choice to peel and help your teammate. You have the choice to deal damage, which you still should be doing a lot. You have all these choices still, and you have really powerful utility. You're by no means weak. I understand that for a lot of support players, you're hopping on support, and you don't feel like the Terminator anymore. You don't feel like you're just the best. You don't feel like you can keep everyone perfectly healed up on your team and simultaneously do a ton of damage. But the reality of it is, you are still crazy impactful and strong, and while some of these decisions are harder for you to make now, because maybe you don't have as many resources that just completely heal people up, you still have tons of impact. And it's more fair because, I mean, if we're being objective, here supports have been the most dominant role in overwatch 2 basically since the start so i would actually put dps and supports power level wise about the same they're pretty similar now in power level one with better and more dynamic utility one with the passive and the ability to constantly pressure the enemy team's resources more now, there's also a part of this, which is that DPS can dual supports a bit better, which is something that's going to take some getting used to by supports. Like, if you're BAP and you take damage from a DPS and you use your heal ability, your shift, now you're not going to get as much heals. Or if you're an auto that needs to self-nade, you're not going to get as much heals with that self-nade. You're only getting 80%. So, these are some things that you should consider and understand about the relationship. But as people get better at dealing with each other and supports understand that they need to oftentimes keep DPS position in check understand where they are and position well we'll talk about positioning more later i think that overall this is a healthier relationship between dps and supports and i like how they're balanced right now although there are some outliers there's still going to be some outliers and we'll talk about those in a bit now another thing that's super important about the dps passive is that dps can actually shoot tanks and it matters so before moving from overwatch 1 to overwatch 2 Tanks became unkillable monsters where you literally just couldn't focus them at all. And that's what we teach and that's what we coach. And that's what we all learned is that you can't just dump all your damage into a tank that's getting double pocketed and basically shrugging off everything you're doing. But now, if you force a double pocket on a tank, if you force pocketing it all on a tank, you are getting value because your supports can't eventually keep up forever. You're actually winning the engagement and the damage is basically out producing a lot of the supporting from the supports heals. So what do you do? Well, you gotta make sure that you're not taking crazy amount of damage as a tank in the open, that's one. What do you do as a support? Well, you got to make sure that you're combining damage to force DPS off angles, not just trying to ignore them and pump into a tank. So there are changes to how the game is played and how the game is balanced and how the game feels, but it is important to allow a tank to get punished. And it is important that healing cannot just wipe away a tank's mistakes. Now, I'm not saying that tank is great, and I do think that something needs to be done about the tank experience, which we'll talk about in a bit. But my point here is that DPS can actually punish tanks in a way that they never could before. And that's super important to make the game like function, in my personal opinion. Now, I do want to talk about positioning for a second because I also think that this is super, super important. Positioning matters more in Season 9 than it has in the entirety of Overwatch 2. And this is for basically everybody. So, like, tanks, they got away with a lot because they could stand in that open space and never die. They could just get supported from, like, an Ana that's out of line of sight. She's just constantly pumping you with heals. And you can just be eating DPS damage and not care. You can't do that anymore. And if you have been climbing by doing that, you are going to fall in rank and you're just going to have to get better. You can go check out my coaching or you can just grind up. But either way, you got to get better. But all joking aside, supports also will be getting targeted more and they won't be bailed out as easily with their utility some of the stuff that i talked about you can't use your self-healing utility and it's not going to be as effective as it was before and you're also not going to be able to be healed as much on your way out you do have more health to play with but your abilities don't carry as much weight and other healing doesn't carry as much weight now for the dps dps always struggled with this and this is one of the reasons why dps have died the most and they pretty much always do die the most because they have to take off angles and they have to take positions that they ignore the tank and pressure other people but by doing that they isolate themselves and they risk death and that's why dps almost always have more death than everyone else in your team or in the entire game dps have all the deaths and that's another thing that this does is now being alive is super super important 
And because you could punish tanks, because you can actually pressure out people, you don't have to go on these crazy, crazy off angles. I mean, still an off angle is nice, but it's also important to evaluate risk versus reward, right? You can still do things in the neutral and you don't have to go make a play on a back line in order to get value. You existing and constantly tricking the passive is value. So DPS have to kind of balance that risk and reward. If they die, they can't keep triggering the passive, but at the same time, they don't have to go psychotic and go crazy aggressive so that they're feeding or making the play work every single time. And for DPS in particular, you combine that with the self-reliance passive and being close to cover matters even more than it did before. And it's kind of true for everyone, but DPS feel it and supports have always kind of felt it. Support passive still being better than DPS passive. So overall, positioning is like king right now. It's so freaking important. And because of the aim changes, you know, the bullets, big bullet changes, Overwatch is going to be more of a game that is testing your game sense, your positioning, and your timing as opposed to just your raw mechanics. I mean, mechanics still matter, don't get me wrong, but there are other things that play a factor into Overwatch that I think should matter, but they haven't always mattered in Overwatch 2. They just haven't, because you could wipe them away with your utility, your healing, or just the fact that you could mitigate damage, and I think that this is a good change and a step in the right direction. Now, last up for the good, as far as meta is concerned, it looks like that Dive is back in the menu. At least at the high ranks of play, Dive is looking really, really clean, and... I'm personally a huge fan of Dive. This is just a personal preference, but Dive is my favorite composition to play, and it's better right now than it's been in a long time. Poke is still the predominant map on a lot of these sniper maps, and I think that we can move towards a healthy meta where it's a combination of Dive and Poke, but this one is mostly my personal opinion, what I like, and what I like is Dive. We back, baby, we back. But I do want to talk about the bad because it's not just perfect. Season 9 is not perfect by any means. There are some huge things that need to be addressed. I think that they're a lot easier to address under the new system than the old system, but they do need to be addressed. And the first one is take agency. I did say that DPS and supports, in my opinion, are more in line with the value and impact, right? But tank is still low. Tank has high value, of course, on paper, but... Just because it has high value doesn't mean you feel it. And the tanking agency, the tanking experience, it has basically felt like shit and it still feels like shit. So yeah, they need to address that. And I'm not entirely sure how. With only one tank, what do you do to make it so that they're simultaneously killable, but also they have the means in order to protect themselves, the means to take fights when they want to, and the means to not just get feasted on? Because there are some tanks, especially a lot of the brawl tanks, characters like Hog, characters like Ramatra, these characters just are struggling, like particularly hard right now, and dive tanks are thriving. Now, I've already told you my personal bias that I'm biased towards dive, and I'm, of course I'm biased towards dive tanks, so when I see that dive tank, and poke tanks like Sigma are doing perfectly fine. I like that because I like those characters' designs. I think they're better overall. That's just my personal opinion. But that also just leaves a lot of these other tanks to have a really terrible experience, right? If you're not playing, you know, D.Va or Wrecking Ball or Sigma or even Winston, you might be having a terrible time in this season. And I get that. I understand that. And I don't think that just removing Brawl from the pool is the right play. But I don't see how you can have healthy tank interactions with all the tanks in this current system without giving you a second tank. I just don't see it because in a lot of ways that second tank can kind of cover up with a lot of your weaknesses that you had. So without that in place, how they did it before is just make tanks unkillable and then you didn't need that second tank because you were just an unkillable monster, but then that just kind of warped the whole DPS side of things and made them suffer in a major way. So yeah, I don't really know the perfect solution here. I think a lot of these new changes under a 6v6 system would be like freaking chef's kiss. It would be amazing, but I don't really foresee that coming. So in a 5v5 system, I really do think that dive tanks are just going to be what people are going to start to play more of. Dive in some poke tanks. There's going to be a lot less brawl in general that is being played. And then if we stay in this system for a long enough time, maybe there'll be some reworks to some tanks. We'll have to wait and see on that. But I do understand that the tanking experience is pretty negative right now if you're playing some characters. My suggestion for you would be do what pretty much DPS players have been doing since forever and just adapt to what actually works right now so that you're not just constantly suffering. 
And then on top of that, make sure that you're using cover properly and, you know, making sure that you're not standing in the open, hoping and praying that your supports can keep you up because they just can't anymore. And you're struggling because of your bad positioning, not necessarily because of your tank choice. But yeah, I still think it needs addressed, but that's what I would suggest you do right now. Now for DPS, the passive needs an indicator. That's a pretty easy one to do. Just make it so that when you have the DPS passive on you, you know it. And that's just good. I think that's generally just good. On top of that, many heroes need an HP and bullet size adjustment. We did talk about that before. It's a bad and it definitely... There are some characters that are just complete outliers. Like Zen, who has 275 HP. I don't know if that's true at the time of you watching this. But 275 HP shooting freaking giant globs is... Uh, is 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 a little, you know i'm a I, i'm a zen main i love zen on the support side of things um but that's a little too far everyone knows that <laughs> and then last up in the bad some heroes are just completely unusable in the new system we did talk about that for tanking how some tanks are just really struggling but on top of that there's a lot of dps and supports that are just like just really bad in the new system characters like life weaver nearly unplayable characters like alari are just absolute atrocious junkrat doesn't even function anymore at a base level there's so many different characters that are just being left behind in this new patch and uh that's gonna happen and i i have made the argument before that i don't think every single character needs to be playable at all times in fact i don't think it's possible to do that but I do think that there should be some compensation to some of the characters that have been left out to dry because, you know, Junkrat players have basically locked Junkrat no matter how good he is since the dawn of time. And this season, they can't even play their character anymore. And I don't really think that you should do that. I mean, you should keep those sub-communities of people. It doesn't mean that Junkrat has to be meta. It doesn't mean that Junkrat has to be the best character in the world. But don't completely remove the character's viability, you know, from the game. Uh, at the cost of one of your minor communities. I don't think they should ever really do that. So, you know, maybe some slight buffs or some potential reworks. That would be nice overall. Now, in summary, though, I want to make this clear. All the problems that I've listed are easier to fix in the newer system than the old. I think that this new system obviously has a lot of broken parts and a lot of problems. But even with all that, I think we're in a better state right now in Overwatch 2 than at any other time in Overwatch 2, which is pretty crazy. Maybe besides the beta. The beta was good. But back then, we just didn't know how broken Sojourn was. So it wasn't really that good. Probably not. And in my opinion, over the next couple of bounce patches, we're really going to see this system kind of take form. And I think it's going to get better from here. And the most important part about all of this is that it's restored a big part of my faith in Blizzard. It's restored my faith in the dev team. I'm letting them cook, so to speak, because... I haven't had a lot of faith in them in the past, but they really delivered on this crazy thing that I think takes guts to do. I think it's hard to go this crazy with the system that everyone's going to disagree with, that everyone's going to hate on. And I think it's good changes, like all around. So I really hope that the community doesn't go so crazy as to reel back all these changes. Just let it get better from here i think that overwatch 2 could be amazing if they are allowed to cook on it so yeah definitely let me know if you agree or disagree with anything i said in this video and smash that like subscribe if you enjoyed the content thank you and i'll see you next time